So here you can see I've, I've set up some data already uh, from the circles lab. Uh, this is decent data, but it'll get us to the point. But you can see right away that as I type this stuff in, it's not quite fitting into the box here. So uh, a quick trick you can do is if you type in this value, so it should say diameter uh, with centimeters after it, and it doesn't fit, if you take your cursor and put it between two cells like this, you'll see a black cross, and if you double-click that, it'll snap it open uh, immediately to the size that you have. Uh, we could do the same thing here with C, as circumference is bleeding out of the cell. Double-click, boom. Uh, the other thing that's really useful, I've already done it, so I'll get rid of it, it and do it again, is to put boxes around all your data. Because when you print this from Excel and you don't have boxes around it, they, the numbers just seem to appear to be floating around. And it's uh, kind of sometimes hard to, to figure out exactly where they belong. So here I have this all in box. So I'm going to highlight all of this. And if you go up to here, you see this border uh, tab. Click down on that. I'm going to click no borders right now. This will get it back to the way it would look when you originally did it. So right now if I was to print this, and actually I could show you. Here they are. The numbers would just kind of be floating out there in space. Doesn't quite look good. If you centered them, it might look a little better, but still I prefer uh, having them boxed up. So I'm going to, again, with the white cross, click, hold, drag to highlight values. Go back up to this borders button right here. And then do all borders, and that will box it all up. Now I would suggest uh, bookmarking this video because there's going to be a lot of times you're probably going to want to go back to pieces of this and check it out again because we'll be doing a lot of graphing Excel this year. All right, so the next step here is now that we got this, we've set it up nice, uh, we're going to graph this information on our on a graph. Now one tip I will give you is always put the x-axis to the left. When you're setting up your data table here, Excel in automatically sets whatever your x or whatever is to the left uh, as your x-axis. Now there's ways around that again if you're a little more savvy with Excel, but this is a good trick to use to, so you don't have to worry about it. So always put the x-axis to the left and you should be all right. Oops. All right, so now what are we going to do? Well, we want to make a circumference versus diameter graph. which again means that circumference is going to go on the y-axis and diameter is going to go on the x. So I've already set it up so that the diameter is to the left in the data table. So what you're going to do here is you're going to take this white cross again and hover over the cell with the data for the x-axis first. You're going to click, hold, and then drag down to highlight all of these numbers. If you end up doing like a couple of extra clicks in there, uh, that will throw off your series and you'll get some crazy looking graphs. So if you do that, like if I go click and then click, go to and then hold like shift to click the rest, I would just click off to the side and try again. Click, hold, drag across the numbers of the x-axis. Once you have those highlighted, now you can hold the control button and do the same thing for the y-axis. Now notice I am only highlighting the numbers, not the value, or not the, the words up here for them. So just the numbers. Again, click, drag, hold control, and then do the same thing for the y-axis. So now I have all my information uh, highlighted. This is when you're going to go up here to the Insert tab at the top. And we are going to come over here to the charts section. And the chart we are basically always going to use in this class is going to be this upper right one called XY Scatter. I'm going to click on the open up the tab button here. And the one we are going to always do again is this one that has no uh, lines drawn on it. So it'll give you a preview of your chart. If its preview looks pretty good, great. If you're seeing lots of different color dots and stuff, that means you clicked wrong. So restart and, and re-highlight your values again. 
So I'm going to click on this, and now my chart is made. So if you do a print preview at some time, that's not a bad idea because it'll give you these dotted lines to kind of indicate where the uh, print will go, what's going to be on the page. So like right now, if I have this over that dotted line right here, uh, this chart will actually be printed on two separate pages, half of it, and it's not a good thing. So you can kind of set it up. And I'm going to slide it over here to the second page for now. All right. So now that we got this, we see there's lots of stuff missing here. So the simplest way to fix this up is this little plus button will allow you to add stuff to your chart um, or even edit it if it's already there. But for instance, chart title is already there. Um, so I'm just going to click on that until I get it, my little uh, typing cursor. Highlight it and retype in here. Circumference versus diameter. So now chart title is, is good. I'm going to delete this. All right, so now we're missing a few things. Most notably, the labels on the axes and the best fit line. We'll talk about that second, so let's start with the axes titles. So we're going to click this plus, and you can see chart titles already highlighted. There are axes, there's grid lines, that's fine. We're going to put in axis titles. Axis titles. Click on that box and you'll see both of them will appear. And you can come in here and edit edit them. So since this is the y-axis, we know that's circumference. And make sure you don't forget to put the units in there. Same thing here with the x-axis. All right, so now it's starting to look like a graph. But again, for us, we like to get that trend line or that best fit line in there. Um, and the reason I said trend line is because that's what Excel calls it. So again, if you click on the plus here, you'll see this trend line button. And if you hover over it, it'll show you what it looks like. And it's highlighted there. So I'm going to click on that. Add that trend line in there. But still, this is not everything. So what we'd like to make sure is this trend line is actually formatted properly. I'm going to move it over to the left. So when the box opens up, you'll be able to see it better. So what you're going to do here is once that trend line is set, if you right click on the trend line, it'll open up this little uh, box. And what we're going to do is click on format trend line. When you do this, it'll open up a, there it is, to the far right, the format trend line uh, options to edit that trend line. It'll give you different types of curves you can put on here. We're talking about linear today because we know the circumference versus diameter is a linear relationship. We're going to keep that box clicked. But if we were doing um, a power curve or anything like that, which, again, does not come up very much in this class, uh, you have those options here. So linear is clicked, so that's good. We're going to scroll down now. The next important uh, button here is the set intercept button. If we tell you that 0, 0 is a legitimate point that we want to use, you can click this button and it will automatically set the intercept to 0. So 0, 0 will become an official point right here on the graph and that line will go through it. What that will do is it will eliminate the B in your equation Y equals MX plus B leaving you just y equals mx. In this particular lab, I'm going to do that, but I will show you the other way as well. So I'm going to set intercept to zero. If you watch the line when I do this, it will shift slightly. Again, watch. Because we're using zero, zero as a point, it shifts slightly and it takes away that value. The most important thing for us is going to be this button, display equation on the chart. This will actually put the equation y equals mx plus b on your chart, but it will give you values for m, the slope, and b, the intercept. In this case, there will be no b because I've set the intercept to zero, but there will be a slope value, which basically does the work for you that we would normally do using rise over run, delta y over delta x. So here it is, display equation on chart. Boom. And we get the equation. Let's see if I can make that bigger. Oh, make sure it's highlighted. So you can highlight that and increase the font size to make it bigger, which is actually a really good idea. 
I don't know why it's jumping like that. I'll try it one more time. I'll do it quicker. Oh, it's giving up. It's not going to happen. But you get the point. So you can see here, the slope is 3.1807, which we know from our work in this lab that the slope should be pi, and that's pretty close. So now we have a number here that we can actually do some work with uh, and, and do some error analysis with.